This is Miami All Access. Tell us about that uh, <laughs> big three you had to, to tie it up there. Um, I, I don't know. I just we needed a shot, so um, I shot that shot a million times. So you know, just try to step up when my team needed. That's all I can really say. Yeah, you were under a lot of, you know, pretty much pressure. Wasn't I mean, you? I mean. I, it's, we're having fun out there. I mean, I don't really put a lot of pressure on myself. I think when I do put pressure on myself, that's when I start to mess up. So, you know, when I'm out there relaxed and, and, and Coop was just like, you know, take your time. If they miss the free throw, we need a three. Um, and he said, just make a play, and I made a play. Will, what's the difference, uh, first half, second half? Enormous difference in uh, production uh, overall, but uh, what started clicking? I mean, it was a combination of our energy wasn't great in the first half and they just shot the lights out. I mean, shots that they, I mean, typically they average like 60 points a game and they dropped 50 on us in the first half, so we dug ourselves a huge hole. And I mean, anytime they had an open look on our breakdowns, they knocked them down. And then in the second half, we just came out with, you know, a sense of fire that we were just desperate to get a win. <coughs> I mean, we've been through a lot this season already, and I think I can speak for all three of us when I say that we were just, we just really wanted this one and we went out and took it. It was ours for the taking and we just grabbed it. Jared, the last time uh, Coach was in here, he was talking about how your shot was coming around in practice and everything. So uh, it looked like it was uh, today you were really stroking it pretty well. Is it uh, you've been getting there with uh, with them? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I know I can shoot the ball. It's just this year has been tough on me, and I just stay shooting. I, tonight I just came out there. It was aggressive. Didn't worry about missing. Didn't worry about taking bad shots. So I was just being aggressive, you know, against that zone. It's, we were just trying to get some shots up, basically. How did you guys, the first half, that 4-1 zone looked like it really had you guys frustrated. It was tough to get anything inside, and you guys couldn't really find any holes. What was the thought going into halftime, how you guys were going to beat that? Well, it's tough because it's, it's so hard to simulate that zone in practice because, I mean, their back line is 6'9", 6'11", 6'7", or something. So, I mean, you can't really simulate that in practice. So the passes that we're making in practice into the middle to kind of, because that's what you want to do against the zone, you want to make passes into the middle to kind of break it down. The passes that we were making in practice weren't as easy when we got to the game. So it's hard to simulate it. So we kind of had the mindset that we were going to attack into the middle as opposed to just try to throw it in there. And I think in the second half, Eric had a much better mindset attacking into the zone. Willie, Giovanni did a good job of attacking in there when we had opportunities. And there were fouls. So we got into the free throw line. And that was a huge part in the second half is just that we hit our free throws. And a lot of guys stepped up when they needed to to knock them down. How big was the free throws, too? You guys are 90% from the free throw line. I think Cooper's going to be a ton happier than he was Wednesday night. So did you guys have a lot of practice Thursday with the free throws? Yeah, you, you always know after we have a bad free throw shooting game, there's always like a half-hour segment at the end of each practice just shooting free throws. So, I mean, it's just repetition. Guys, when you're rolling like we were in the second half, it's easy to shoot with confidence. You know, when you're battling back, it's – when you, when you dig yourself a hole, you're kind of thinking like, all right, these free throws are huge. But when you're really on a run, you're feeling good. They just kind of come easy to you. So guys did a good job of just stepping up. Anytime you go into overtime, you, I guess both teams are going to be taxed and uh, quite a bit. Uh, but you were playing against a very aggressive zone and everything. How tired was everybody heading into that? Uh, did you feel like you had any gas left in the tank? Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, we were tired, but, you know, um, when, you, when you get to that point, you know, it's just who wants it more. I um, mean, coaches kept telling us, you know, block it out, stay focused, fight the fatigue, and, and that's what we did. Um, and we were able to capitalize on that, on that zone. I feel like they were a little tired as well, so that's what kind of made it easier for us that we stayed on the attack, so. Uh, that 2-3 zone, they're pretty well known, uh, you know, for that how how tough is it? It looked like they were kind of more interested in taking away the, the lanes, the passing lanes, than they were, you know, just smothering you. Would that be fairly accurate? Um, correct. Um, it's definitely something different. It, they, it's kind of like a 2-3, but they bring their wings up so far. So it's not really traditional, um, you know. But, I mean, we have shooters. And when you have a shooters, you know, it's easier to to attack zones because Jared was spreading them out, Sully was spreading them out. That's what made them able. That's what made guys like me, Willie, Geo, being able to attack and you know hit the middle or hit LJ on the dump down stuff like that. So, 
Jared and LJ, you guys had a huge night tonight and played a big part in the win because the first half guys like Eric wasn't able to do what he's normally able to do. So, so how big is it for you and LJ to have big nights like tonight? I mean, this season we've kind of relied on Sully and E and G and Willie sometimes. So, I mean, just getting that extra production basically is, just gives us another dynamic offensively. I mean, LJ got seven rebounds, and I mean, that's what he should be out there doing. So that was big for us, four blocks. I mean, he, he did a great job, honestly, especially bringing some size against that zone inside. Looked like LJ stepped it up a little bit uh, as the game went along as far as being aggressive. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a real mellow guy. And sometimes I kind of made a point early in the half to just kind of set a fire on him, get in his face a little bit, because sometimes he feeds off that. So, I mean, he, he just we just kind of made a point to tell him that every single rebound that's up in the air needs to be his. And down the stretch especially, I think the last three or four possessions, he just went up, got it at its highest point, no one else even stood a chance. And that's what we need from him every night. It's just, you know, every few games, it needs to be every single night. And that's what we're working towards. Uh, first of all, um, some kind of game. That... Uh, obviously, I've been a part of a lot of games, but that's the largest comeback that I've actually ever been a part of that I can remember um, as a Division I um, coach in the second half. And, you know, hats off to that group over in the other locker room. They came out and they shot the ball and they stifled us and we had no answer um, for their zone. Um, they had more energy, they played with more passion, had more effort. It was just that, that simple. And, once again, we dug ourselves an incredibly, this time, an incredibly uh, large hole. Um, but second half, I thought our guys came out um, with with a sense of purpose. Um, we're much more aggressive in attacking, and, and we were able to start the second half on a little bit of a run. I think we started it on a 10-0 run, so that I think that certainly helped our, our morale and, and, and gave us a little boost, but we still had a long way to go. Uh, we continued to cut the game there in the second half. We had some guys that uh, stepped up. Jared Eustace had not been playing very much for us, and he steps up and he makes some plays. He shoots a couple shots and hustles, gets offensive rebounds. Um, Will Sullivan gets a double-double um, at his size and, and found ways to, to help the team and, and just doing different little things. And, and we pretty much went with about seven guys there in that second half. Um, I thought LJ Livingston played much better in the second half, although he had a couple of un, un, unfortunate turnovers and that, you know, we've got to learn from that. But, you know, we continued to fight and we continued to hang in there and, you know, we split the game up a little bit in the small quarters and finally we got the lead, their lead down to a manageable number and then we were stuck there for around, for around 8 to 10, 11 points and couldn't quite cut into it. And then the last four minutes, we're able to uh, just nudge our way down. And let's be honest, um, Eric hits a couple of big shots. Um, sometimes that's what it takes. You got to have somebody step up and, and hit a couple shots. I actually thought Jared's shot was in, um, a little play action that we ran. And I thought he had knocked that one in. So um, it seems like I'm on the other side a lot of times of those shots. So it feels good to finally be on the uh, positive side of that. But. Um, you know, we did a pretty decent job on the boards and we were able to out-rebound them, but more importantly, we were able to get second chance points or second chance opportunities. Um, I think we had 14 offensive rebounds. And so, great game, fun. Um, I hate that anyone has to lose. Um, it's kind of not fun, that part for them, but, um, you know, glad we won. Questions? Eric, Eric shot to, uh, to tie it. Close of regulation there. Um, looked kind of somewhat off balance. They they challenged him and he uh, still managed to get it off with the. Uh, was that? Uh, did you have anything else planned? Or well, one one of the things you know, Eric was dribbling up and, and against their zone, it is hard to run plays for threes because it's so extended. Um, sometimes the best way um, to get it is to get it as you as he did as you're coming down and able and he sort of used one of our guys got in the way and able to get an action and raise up and get a shot um you know and that was the deal we knew we needed to have a three we wanted to move the ball we could maybe get in get inside strength the defense and and pitch out but you know i thought actually he got a pretty as much it was off balance it was a little bit but he got a pretty decent look especially when you look at his size and against that zone but it, it is hard 
to run sets for threes against the zone because they're extended out so far. I thought that look they gave him in overtime when he made that one was actually an easier shot. Um, the one when he drove towards the baseline? That yes. Uh, drove. Oh, the, the one up top. I'm thinking of the two-pointer that was – that's the one he took that we went down, I believe. And I thought that was a good look. And they're, they're all running together. You know, the first one he hits, steps in, and knocks it in. I mean, in many ways, you have to be a player. Um, you got to be ready. You need players to make plays. And, you know, coaching is overrated in many ways, especially when you got good players and they make plays for you. How tough is it as a coach to see how good the team plays in the second half and know what you have as a team? Mm -hmm. And just the first half always seems to be a bug for you guys. I think it's probably more frustrating than anything. You know, for whatever reason, our mentality has not been where it needs to be in the first half. And, hell, I'm going to take most of the credit for that. Um, There's probably something I've, I've got to do something different, and you know, in order to get this group uh, going. And, you know, and, and, and really what, what has killed us, you know, they make the first three of the game. But we get into a point to where we will have three or four possessions and we'll have three turnovers. And it'll happen in the first five minutes of the game. And the other team comes down, scores, gets to the boards or whatever. And then, consequently, we typically start off missing our free throws, which it's like a blueprint. We did it the game before. We did it this game. And, and then usually somewhere along there we figure out and we start making free throws, and we take better we take better care of the ball. I think we had ten turnovers in the first half, and so we end up with we end up with nine more, which isn't great. But you know, over the last you know uh, second half and the overtime, we end up with another nine. That's not exactly where you want to be. Nineteen turnovers is a lot, um, but you know we were able to eke it out. How important was the rebounding tonight? 38 to 28, you guys won in that total. And you guys were kind of an undersized team most of the time, running four guards. Well, yeah, it is. And, but, you know, there were a couple. Sully keeps alive. Jarrett keeps alive. Um, LJ gets a couple. G gets a couple. I think Willie even got some. I mean, you know, in many ways, rebounding is about effort. I mean, that's what it is. It's the will to want to go get the basketball. I mean, I, you know, does it help maybe if you're 6'8", 225, 240? Yeah, but, you know, for whatever reason, some people just want to go get it, and they got, and they've got, they want it more, and that's what happens. And I thought in the second half, we wanted the ball, and we and we went after it, and you know, and we got some good um, for, bounces for us. Fortunately for us, excuse me. Anytime you're playing that zone, there's they're going to have to put up with some frustrations and trying. Yeah. Well, we've got seven new guys, and it's hard because you you can't. You know, even though we work on it in practice, it doesn't look the same. And so part of playing it is, you, one, you have to get comfortable with it. You have to not panic. You know, you have to understand you shot fakes, pass fakes. Um, you got to get in some gaps. But when you get in the gaps, you got to be strong with your ball because they're there to dig them out. And, you know, you can't be soft with it. And then you've got to be able to make some uh, make some shots, which always makes it a – uh, a lot better zone offense when you make shots. But, you know, hopefully as the game went on, we adjusted better and better to the zone. But, I mean, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's still hard to play against, I'll tell you that. How important is it that Jared's finally developing that, that shot that he's got tonight? Well, I mean, he doesn't even shoot the ball well from three tonight when you look at it. I mean, I didn't realize he got 11 of them up. Jeez. How many used to shoot Stokes, huh? But I mean, he's three of eleven, so he doesn't he doesn't shoot a great clip. Um, but it was something about that eleven, um, those shots, and something about how he played that it, it just goes to show you numbers don't always tell the tell the true story of the game because he had some energy, had some passion, and then I thought defensively he actually did a pretty good job. There were some times late down the stretch, and he kept his guy in front of him, and then. Unfortunately for us, there's going to be times when the ball goes up in the air late in games. It happened here tonight, and we don't get a rebound. And that, and that is frustrating, but sometimes I look out there, and it is midget city. And so we've got to do a lot of things right to get, you know, to get the ball. It looks like they responded pretty well to your halftime speech at Buffalo about how basketball has to hurt. They came out, and a lot of guys were going out after the ball in the second half, going after really tough stuff. Well... Winning hurts, and 
it, it should. You know, it. You know, you should. You should be sore. Um, and you know, boxing out, taking charges. You know, um, playing through contact, putting your body on people, chesting people, and doing those things. Those things aren't supposed to feel good, but they feel a, a hell of a lot better after you win, and then you forget about them. And really, when it becomes a habit, it doesn't hurt as much. It just doesn't. It's just what you do. And so I want our team to understand that, and that's what we talked about, and that you're not supposed to feel good when you win. Your body's not. You're supposed to be sore, supposed to hurt. But it feels a lot better when you win, and it's just like going down to the other end of the court. You get hurt on the defensive end. You get a wide-open look. The guy still takes the shot. Well, he ain't hurting so much now. Same thing. How big of a shot in the arm is this for your team? Um, I think probably more for their morale, you know, because it's, you know, we've been up and down in many ways, and we've put ourselves in those holes because we've gone through stretches and games where we just, we really, really struggle. But I think you're always looking for something to build on. Um, and obviously this is, it's there, it's on tape. Um, they'll get an opportunity to see it, but I think more importantly, they'll, they'll get an opportunity to see the effort that it takes in order to win. Wouldn't you say this uh, win certainly fits your mantra? Of uh, winning of together, having to do it absolutely, together. absolutely, and you know, I think it was our last game, and I talked about it. You take one game, and however you have to do it, that's how you win. Yeah, that's the only thing you worry about. No matter how ugly it is, no matter what you have to do, you find a way to win it, and then you move on to the next one. And you know, we found a way to win it. And you know, I mean, it's this. I've been on both sides. You know, it's hard when you lose it feels a lot better when you win it but you know for our group they need to understand what it was you know obviously we made shots but what it is and that it is what it takes to compete you have to compete and you don't always win them when you compete but this is what that group did in the second half of the game and found a way and then you know we eked it out in overtime which is even better and I told Eric, next time you do that with the ball, you throw it to the other end of the court. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was sick. Don't trust me. It's in the air. And I saw it was in the air, and I looked at the clock because I could see the clock. And the buzzer was not going to go off by the time. So you throw it to the other end of the court. So better yet, you know, I'd have been fine if he'd held it. <laughs> you know, got fouled. He's a good free throw shooter. I like, I mean, I understand the thought process, but you don't throw it that way. Let's throw it the other way. Okay, so anything else?